Hello and welcome to the She Reads Romance Books podcast, the ultimate show for romance book lovers looking for the best books worth reading. I'm your host, Leslie Murphy, and in each short episode, I share my favorite book list of recommendations so you know exactly what to add to your must-read list. Join me as I explore the romance genre and have fun collecting book boyfriends along the way, because life is better with a love story. Hey readers, welcome back to the She Reads Romance Books podcast, where today I'm moving into what I consider a really fun micro trope. Now, I had a good time talking about some steamy romance topics in the last few episodes of the podcast, but today, as I said, I'm going to move towards a little bit more fun and unique micro trope that I totally love and which romance authors use to create these sort of unique stories, and that micro trope is the stuck in an elevator trope. Now, has that ever happened to you? I hope not. Where you know you're just trying to get from point A to point B, and all of a sudden the elevator stops and you're stuck. I think I'd go a little crazy, to be honest, if that happened to me, especially if I ended up being stuck for a really long time. I'm not afraid of small spaces, but not knowing if someone was aware that I was trapped in an elevator would probably drive me insane. So I kind of got to thinking, okay, if this did ever happen to me, who would I want to have stuck in an elevator with me for that ordeal? And of course, I had to go instantly to my favorite fictional characters, who I would want to be stuck with in an elevator from my favorite romance books. And let's see, thinking about it, I would have to say the first person or character that comes to mind would be Matt from Next to You by Hannah Bonham Young. Matt is this large guy, and I think that would translate into him just being this huge calming presence in a very stressful time being stuck in an elevator. And he would just be really fun, I think, to talk with and hang out with. Maybe, you know, he would tell me some stories from the auto mechanic shop where he works or And I bet he would give me this really great hug if I was starting to have an anxiety attack. So, yeah, I think Matt would be a really great choice. I think, let's see, I might also want to pick, ooh, Cletus from Beard Science by Penny Reed. I think he could totally MacGyver our way out of a stuck elevator so we wouldn't have to be waiting there for hours. Or if we were stuck, he could probably regale me with fun stories about all the dirt that he has on everyone in Green Valley. So I think Cletus would definitely be a good pick. Or now that I think about it, ooh, I would have to say I would love, love, love to be stuck in an elevator with Killian Black from Cruel Paradise by J.T. Geisinger because, one, he would just be so good to look at. (laughs) And if I was single, we would really, you know, could come up with some fun ways to entertain ourselves in that small time we were stuck in an elevator. But I also think he could totally MacGyver our way out of there, too. So sorry, Cletus. I think I ultimately have to go with Killian as he would be the perfect fictional character to be stuck with in an elevator. And if I had to pick a real person, maybe Chris Helmsworth. Because, yes, he's great to look at, but I think his accent, you know, just listening to him talk would just totally soothe me and calm me. And I'd probably ask him about all the dirt from making the Avenger movies and want him to tell me all the the behind-the-scenes shenanigans that probably went on when they were filming. I think I would also be love or would love to be stuck in an elevator with a singer. I mean, I just want them to sing to me to pass the time, and that would be a really awesome distraction. So maybe someone like Ed Sheeran or Sting. Oh, gosh, I just love Sting. Or Adele. Oh, she could probably belt it out in that little box of an elevator, and I'd love it since I haven't been able to get to her stay in Las Vegas. I'm not a Swifty only because I don't listen to the radio that often, but I think Taylor Swift would obviously be a great person to be stuck in an elevator with because I think she'd probably get some inspiration and write 
you know, a new song that would, of course, go on to be a smash hit. And then maybe she'd even put me in her video for that smash hit, which would be really cool. <laughs> so yeah, Taylor Swift would be a good choice. So, but who would you love to be stuck in an elevator with? I'm curious, either fictional or real. You'll have to share and let me know in the comments on the blog because I'd love to hear it. But moving on to today's book list, I am going to talk about my five favorite romance books where the characters get stuck in an elevator, which then prompts, of course, their eventual love story and happily ever after. The first one that I absolutely adored and cannot recommend enough, and that is The Redo by Max Monroe. This is actually the fourth book in their Winslow Brothers series, obviously about four different brothers. I've read two other books in the series and really, really enjoyed them, but gosh, The Redo, it just totally hits you with all the feels, and you're just going to fall in love with both of these characters in this book. You could totally read it as a standalone, but it does culminate with the last Winslow brother finding his happily ever after and that last brother to have the prophecy from this psychic that they all went to that comes true. So it sort of feels like this good ending to the series as a whole. But this is the story about Remington, a man who was left at the altar many years ago and who, of course, like doesn't believe in relationships ever since. And he happens to run into a former high school sweetheart in an elevator that gets stuck in New York City where it's blazing hot outside and in the elevator. So this is a bit of a second chance romance story if you love those. Remy and Maria haven't seen each other in years and so now they're stuck in this elevator and she happens to be pregnant but it's not really what you think. There's no cheating or anything involved. She is pregnant with her sister and brother-in-law's baby. She's like the surrogate. But the kicker is that her sister and brother-in-law have recently passed away in a car accident. So she's now alone, pregnant with the baby, and at the same time running her own, you know, crazy real estate business in the city. And slowly and understandably getting quite overwhelmed. And to top that all off, she's now stuck in this elevator. It is such a fun meet cute that brings them um, back together again. Remy is just, you know, being the nice guy he is, offers them to help Maria, recognizing her situation where she's pregnant and all alone. But she declines and is determined she's just going to figure it out on her own. But as luck would have it, they happen to get stuck again in another different elevator while Maria goes into labor and gives birth. As if it's not enough to have this hunk of a guy who doesn't do relationships, mind you, deliver her baby, he then steps up to help her afterwards, even though she doesn't want to be a burden. And seeing Remy with an infant, oh my gosh, like adorable. All the like heart feels for this one. It was so freaking cute. This, just, this book just gives you this incredible found family because, of course, they find their happily ever after together. I loved it so much, and it's just a great one in that stuck in an elevator trope where they're stuck not once, but twice. So I highly recommend The Redo by Max Monroe. The next book on my list of stuck in an elevator romance books is Mr. Moneybags by Vi Keeland and Penelope Ward. It is a hidden identity romance where Dex Truitt, a very successful businessman, meets Bianca in an elevator. So Bianca's on her way to interview him, though she doesn't know it's him at the time in the elevator when they get stuck. And because of the way that he's dressed, she assumes Dex is just this delivery guy, not the actual guy that she's supposed to interview, whom she dubs Mr. Moneybags because she doesn't like snobby or who she considers snobby, overeducated, silver spooned men that she thinks Dex is. Well, Dex was instantly taken with her, so he decides to cancel their interview, only agreeing to answer her questions via text if he can ask her his own questions. And he sort of does all this through the help of his secretary so she doesn't um, make the connection that 
Dex was who she was with in the elevator. So meanwhile, he starts dating her, pretending to be that messenger or delivery guy, Jay, that she met in the elevator. So you can kind of see where this is going. He's totally painting himself or putting himself in a corner where Bianca is falling for both men, Dex and Jay. And that's where it gets a little bit wonky, I'll admit, and crazy drama ensues. So if that's not really your thing, then you can skip this one. But it was enjoyable because I really liked their meet cute in the elevator and how he has to pull himself out of the lies that he's sort of spinning. So that's Mr. Moneybags by Vi Keelan and Penelope Ward. Next up on my list of Stuck in an Elevator romance books, is Replay by Amy Dawes. I just love Amy Dawes' work. Her banter is just hilarious, and I love the characters that she writes. This one is a second chance romance that is part of her Harris Brothers world, which are her soccer romance books that are fabulous if you haven't read, yet read them. But this one, like I said, sort of adjacent to that world and it has a bit more heaviness in it than any of her other books in the series. It features a hot Italian who wears a suit. So, I mean, I didn't need to know much more than that about the book if I was going to read it, to be honest. And as much as I love the soccer playing Harris Brothers, this book, as I said, was a bit of a different story, which is that of Santina, Santino Rossi. He's the lawyer for the soccer club and the sister of Mac, one of the soccer-playing boys. So Santino and Tilly have past history where things got pretty hot and heavy between the playboy and the wild girl, but that was five years ago. Now Santino kind of wants to put those playboy days behind him and settle down with someone, and Tilly is just trying to forget about their past. But their attraction comes roaring, roaring back when they find themselves stuck in an elevator when Tilly moves back to town after being away for the past five years. For me, it's hard not to love a really great second chance romance where the characters just are so deserving of their happily ever after. I really liked the setup of their past and how they've grown to be sort of different people than they were when they first met. And yet their attraction is still, gosh, front and center. Santino and Tilly are great examples of what I consider, quote, like real people to me. You know, when authors just write people that seem like, oh, yeah, I feel like I could meet them in real life. You know, sometimes romance books can make characters almost too perfect or even too hateful to make me believe in their love connections. But that's not the case with this one. I think Dawes' Tilly and Santino of the past are examples of some real people in their 20s who just party too hard, drink too much, and who are just not out there looking for a long-term relationship. Of course, that kind of catches up to Tilly, and but now she's back and better than ever in my mind. This story is told from dual points of view, which is awesome because you get inside both of their heads. And it's just a really great overall read, which Dawson seems to always deliver for me. I highly recommend it for fans of her Harris Brothers series, obviously, but even if you're new to that series, it can easily be read as a standalone. So check out Replay. The next book where the characters get stuck in an elevator is Alpha's Temptation by Renee Rose and Lee Savino. Now, this one is a billionaire and werewolf romance, which is, you know, kind of quite the combo. Jackson, our hero, is a self-made billionaire who was banished from his birth path. He's, you know, someone content to just be alone, but then he gets trapped in an elevator with Kylie, who completely panics about being stuck in this small space and unable to get out. And Jackson kind of consoles her and takes care of her, and his inner wolf just screams, mine you know about her even though she is human so as i said jackson helps her through the ordeal but then he comes to find out that she is this hacker or now former hacker who almost took down his company several years in the past when she was a teen 
in the person that he's been hunting ever since. Kylie, however, has gone on the straight and narrow and is just there hoping to get a legit job, but unfortunately has to deal with this ordeal of being trapped on the elevator on her way to her interview. Could the writing have been a bit tighter in this book? Sure. But if you like wolf shifters who are fantastic at dirty talk, then I would say give Alpha's Temptation a go, especially if you want another book in the stuck in the elevator micro trope. Now, the last one on my list of where characters get stuck in an elevator is one of Allie Hazelwood's STEM novellas called Stuck With You. All of her Steminist novellas surround a friend group of women who are scientists working all around the globe. Stuck With You is Sadie's story and another one of Hazelwood's enemies to lovers romances. So Sadie gets stuck for hours in a New York City elevator with Eric, a man who broke her heart after their first encounter. Both she and Eric are civil engineers and have had this one great night together. But then, you know, miscommunication ensues, and now she would rather be anywhere else but stuck in this small space with him. This novella alternates between the present, obviously with them stuck in the elevator, and the past from when they first meet. Because it's a short novella, there is a bit of insta-love, but it really didn't bother me. You just kind of go with it. I just loved the forced proximity bit that forced them to finally address that miscommunication that they have. And I will say too, I'm normally not one to listen to audiobooks, but I did listen to this as an audiobook. And I think that also did influence me quite a bit because I did not care for the narrator, for Eric, who just sounded, made him sound so stuffy, which was a bit hard for me to get over it at first. But I did like the story. And I would say if you have the opportunity to pick, I would say read read the novella as opposed to listening to it because I just, again, didn't think the narrator was very good. And if it's a book that if you love The Love Hypothesis by Allie Hazelwood, I rec- would recommend it because this book has more great writing, you know, fun interjections of current trends that are going on and just a really good story arc. So that is Stuck With You by Allie Hazelwood. So yeah, I think this is just a really fun micro trip to talk about, and I hope you enjoyed it and found some new books to add to your TBR list. And in case you missed it, I I had just dropped something this week, something super cool on the blog, and that is my free fill-in-the-blank romance stories, and I want you to have a copy. I loved Mad Libs as a kid. Not sure if you did those fill-in-the-blank word games where you could complete a story based on the words you picked. I loved them so much that I created my own romance-inspired fill-in-the-blank stories just for you, which you can download to on shereadsromancebooks.com. I'll send you one sweet story and one sweet steamy story for you to complete by yourself or with a friend. Just click the link below so you can grab them. And then once you complete your story or stories, I'd love to hear them. So be sure to join and share in my private Facebook group, the She Reads Romance Books Reader Lounge, or tag me on Instagram at She Reads Romance Books Blog, because it'll be so much fun to hear what you come up with. Thanks so much for tuning into today's episode. And of course, until next time, happy reading, because life is better with a love story. That's all for this episode of the She Reads Romance Books podcast. I hope you enjoyed it and found some new books to add to your TBR list. If you did, please subscribe, rate, and review the show on your favorite podcast app. It really helps me reach more romance book lovers like you, and I appreciate your support. If you're a book boyfriend collector like me, then you'll want to join my email list so you never miss a podcast episode or a new book list. Just visit shereadsromancebooks.com slash join and sign up today. As a thank you, I'll instantly send you my list of top 10 book boyfriends that will make you swoon. Trust me, you don't want to miss this list. Thank you for listening and until next time, happy reading.